<laughs> right. Okay. Uh, good evenings, uh, mornings to everyone, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to my presentations. And now I'm going to share the my presentations. And here. So my name is Lewin from Myanmar. I'm the, one of the executive committee members of Myanmar Bird and Nature Society. And now I'm going to uh, talk about uh, briefly uh, biodiversity and uh, birds in Myanmar on behalf of my organizations. And uh, I have joined the uh, travel industries, especially in ecotourism, uh, about 40 years ago. And now I'm involving uh, in many bird species conservation projects in Myanmar. And I'd like to thank to Asian bird fair teams who are uh, giving me a, a very great opportunities uh, and make this uh, opportunity to talk and make this event happen. And thanks to SSC Tourism who are initiate this event to us in Myanmar and to my friends and colleagues who are sharing their knowledge with this now with this talk. And now uh, I would like to give you some general information about Myanmar. And uh, Myanmar is sharing the borders with the uh, China in the north and northeast, Laos in the east, and Thailand in the southeast, and Bangladesh and India in the west. And uh, Myanmar is the largest country in mainland Southeast Asia. And the total land uh, area is over 600,000 uh, square kilometers. And according to the uh, uh, census from uh, 2010, uh, total population is 51.4 million. And uh, we have uh, four major rivers, which flow from the no north to the south. And uh, the longest one is the Eori River, which is uh, uh, more than 2,000 uh, kilometers long, and start from the uh, Himalayas and end up with the Edmund Sea. And Myanmar has a tropical climate with three seasons, a summer season, and rainy season, and winter season. And the maximum uh, temperatures in summer is 43 degrees Celsius. And in rainy season, about 33 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius in winter. And before I go to about the bird in detail, I would like to describe uh, briefly about the forest types in Myanmar. And we have a uh, hill and temperate evergreen forests and tropical evergreen forests, mixed deciduous and deciduous to crops or in dry forests, dry forests, tidal forests. All these different forest types are uh, supports to the uh, diversity in Myanmar. And there are 132 key biodiversity areas, which is shown in the map. The red one is uh, uh, with the high priorities for uh, key biodiversity areas. And the orange one is showing the uh, medium priority, priority. And the yellow one is the low priority areas. And the white one is still, we still need the data to uh, describe or classify the uh, priorities. And also we categorize the uh, protected areas uh, as national parks, marine national parks, and nature reserve, wildlife centuries, bird centuries, and wildlife park in Myanmar. And I think the threat to biodiversity is happened uh, almost all country in the world. And as in Myanmar, we have uh, the major threat is hunting and resource destruction. Uh, 
illegal or legal mining, logging, slash and bond agriculture expansions, convert natural forest land into commercial plantations, such as white palm, rubber, and uh, a bitter nut, and even the hardwood plantations. And draining wetlands and encroachment is also uh, the major threat in Myanmar uh, can, uh, can cause the wetlands dependent species degraded. And urban development is also it's a threat to biodiversity in Myanmar. And now the species diversity, diversity and endemism. And Myanmar supports a very high diversity of habitats and extremely rich in bird species because we are in the uh, sorry we are in the uh, uh, transitions of three zones uh, Indo uh, Indochinas, uh, Indias, and Eurasia. And uh, here in the uh, in the tables, uh, I show the about the number of species recorded in Myanmar, uh, plants, mammals, and birds, and so on. And but even we have uh, 11 and 36 birds recorded in Myanmar, we just have only the ninth endemic species. And birds in Myanmar, and we have a total recorded uh, 1136, including just a very recent published uh, papers uh, from uh, budding Asia, is including 42 uh, species. And this all species are uh, in, or com uh, combined with the residents and migratory passive migrants and vagrants, and all are put in uh, together in total. And we have our national endemics, these countries, only nine endemics. And we have another four endemic birds area, which is the uh, eastern Himalaya, we got a north, northern forest complex, and Chin Hill uh, complex which support the at least 19 uh, restricted range uh, bird species. And the second one is the uh, central dry zones uh, and air replaced areas which support uh, most of the Myanmar endemic species, such as hooded tree pines, Jordan's minivet, and others endemics. And the third one is Yunnan Mountain, which is uh, situated in the, the northeast of the country and supported only one species. And the, and the fourth one is Edmund Island, uh, endemic bird areas, uh, which it comprise uh, with the Cocoa Island. Uh, and maybe here, some, somewhere here, Cocoa Island, and support the uh, two restricted range species, uh, ground cuckoo and adamant jungles. And also we have uh, uh, three uh, location of the secondary areas and northern Myanmar lowlands, which is uh, comprised with the uh, Chindrin rivers and Malika rivers uh, water catchment area. And supports only one uh, restricted rain species, uh, chestnut back laughing thrush, uh, which is also occur in India. And the second one is uh, uh, Myanmar Thailand Mountains, and it uh, comprised with the East Central Myanmar, and it supports the one restricted rain species named uh, Burmese Yuhina. And the last one is Panazela Silent Lowland Forest, which is comprised the uh, Panazela uh, Thailand and Southern Trans Rim, and supports uh, critically endangered uh, Gunnis Peters.
and uh, we have uh, 55, uh, 57 uh, important birth areas, which is overlap with the uh, key, key biodiversity areas. And also, uh, we uh, Myanmar uh, situated within two flyways, uh, which is uh, uh, two migratory bird flyways, which is uh, Central Asian flyways and East Asian or Australian flyway. So for the brief uh, information for bird species conservation in Myanmar, at the moment, and we are focused on the uh, thre a globally threatened species and also the, uh, the uh, near threatened species. And kind of uh, black poachers, foundation piper, uh, hermitage hornbill, all virtual species and green pea farm, black belly tern, and river tern. River tern is just a near threatened species, but in Myanmar, is uh, uh, the population is seem to be decreased a lot and it's scattered and it's very rare now. So I think the Blue CS is focused on this species conservation and also the Cyrus crane. And the last one is yellow breasted bunting. And other activity in Myanmar, we, uh, we always uh, do the Asian Water Bird Census annually uh, in January, uh, collecting the uh, water bird uh, data from all the uh, inland wetlands and coastal wetlands in Myanmar. And we have the birding activities or bird countings uh, once a month before the pandemic crisis. And and we do the bird watching, a uh, basic bird watching trainings uh, in universities and others in other organizations. And also we have a conservation awareness. Awareness this is the brief one. And now I would like to take you to the uh, popular bird watching sites. Uh, Today I'm going to focus on the. Uh, bird watching sites in Myanmar, uh, because I think many people are interested to see uh, the bird in Myanmar, and a few people are having trouble to Myanmar, and they are uh, not familiar with the uh, Myanmar birding areas. And popular bird uh, birding sites is mean uh, is easy to assess and good accommodations good food, and also a good bird. And people can, people any kind of age can travel easily. So I'll get uh, uh, six sites for the uh, bird watching sites in Myanmar, uh, especially if it's very close to major city, uh, Yangon and Mandalay. And first I would like to go with the Fogger Park, which is close to the Yangon city, just about 30 minutes drive. And most people went, uh, can spend uh, about uh, half days, or if they wish, they can spend the whole days in, in the parks. And uh, all the birds is more than 100, uh, about 200 birds were recorded. And we have the two target bird species in the, uh, in the parks and striped throated booboo and now they call a pale eyes booboo uh, which is a, a, a subspecies of the striped throated booboo uh, but is less yellow stripe on the throat and have a yellow eyes uh, white eyes i don't know they are giving the name is pale eye to me it's like a white and the second one is rocketed three points this one is a bit common in the south but in it's easy to find in Logger Park, and so most the uh, people, I mean uh, the birders, uh, they are keen to see to look for these two species. And apart from these two species, we can see the violet cuckoo and Simho medivet, and the other, uh, including the endemic bird species, white-throated babblers. Eauribobo 
and split recently split from the streaky above all. Uh, Venus breast minus. If you're lucky, you can see the pay cap pigeons and blue wind peters and hooded peters are just occur in uh, rainy seasons because uh, they are breeding visitors. And the rest one oriented daughters and sunbirds, babblers, and stock are their residents. And now it's after, Baga uh, after Loga from Yangon, and now we're going to Bagan to the where Henry takes just uh, designate last year. And most people didn't know that Bagan is a very uh, is an ancient city. It's very old. It was built in since 11th century, and but did uh, did not notice about the uh, they are Bagan support a lot of uh, Myanmar endemic species. And in Bagan, we record uh, one and a half, uh, more than 100 bird species recorded. And here's the endemics uh, recorded around Bagan Temple. And white throated babblers and endemics, uh, John Minivet, who did three points. And Burmese collar dove is just recently split from the Eurasian collar dove. And because it has a yellow eyes, rings, the Eurasian one doesn't have it. And Burmese Prineas and Burmese Bushlock, which uh, you can find easily around the temple in Bagan. And the other bird species around Bagan, and we got the Lager Falcons, which will always uh, stay in one location and breed in the top of the temple. And uh, some other bird species like a rain quill and long beak pipit, vermish shrikes. And there are many species uh, uh, we can find around the, uh, the temple. And uh, after birding in the morning and began, and we can go to the rivers and take a boat and uh, take a boat uh, to the downstreams. And to find the uh, species with the sandlock and white stone chart. And now in winters, you can find the yellow breasted bunting, the critical and danger one. And along the river, you can see the river left winds and uh, oriented predating coal and small predating coals. And if you are lucky, you can see the black belly terns, which is a very rare uh, species. And we have another a uh, lot of uh, species. A bird species living in the uh, grass uh, grassland area. This is all the ox oxbow around here is support a lot of uh, bird species. And after Bagan, and we uh, we can move to the Mount Victoria, we got Namatang National Park, is uh, location located in the west. And but on the way, uh, if you drive. Uh, Straight to the Mount Victoria from Bakan. It just takes a four hours drive. And but our, the birders and us, we uh, we always spend the whole days along the way uh, to the Mount Victoria and to find the other species, which is uh, uh, we can see in the deciduous forest, like uh, a white rump can be falcon, falcon. This is the a female. This is the male one, and also the Burmese natat known as Nicola that Natas as well. And we have uh, uh, almost all the uh, parakeet is Zeb's long tail parakeet. And if we miss some species in uh, endemic species in Bagan, we can find the, them on the way up to Mount Victoria. And here's Nama Towns of Mount Victoria National Park or uh, and Asian Heritage Parks. Uh, that's a more than uh, 291 bird species were recorded in uh, in the park. And here's I would like to describe about the vegetations uh, which birds are occur at, uh, at at different altitudes. And uh, from the air plains and uh, up to the 1,000 meter above sea level, there's a due to craft uh, forest. And thus we can find the species that I mentioned earlier is on the way to Mount Victoria. And these, the 
one is in the shifting cultivation and secondary some uh, species are like to um, uh, feeding in this kind of habitat and above uh, 2000 meter above sea level and we have a uh, uh, pines and laurel and stone oak forest and we support uh, the Burmese tip this is a mamma endemic species and start from this we can get uh, uh, Myanmar endemics of white brown nuthatch. And if you're going up uh, a bit high, higher and you see the buff breasted parabell. And, and if uh, you wish to uh, walking, trekking up to the up to the peak to the summit, there's about uh, 3,000 meters above sea level and at the meadows and you can find the uh, oriental skylarks and uh, bamboo mountain bed patrate uh, in this areas and also you can see also the Burmese teat and uh, the uh, the white brown net touch as well and here's the babax now we always call the Mount Victoria babax and uh, but in the crypt of some books it's mentioned uh, the uh, Chinese babax and and another brown cat laughing thrush is a restricted range species of the East Hamelian species and striped laughing thrush, awesome laughing thrush. And apart from this, you can see the blue wind laughing thrush and red faced Leo Chipler. And the other small bird in uh, Chin Hill Ren Babblers. It's split from the long tail and babblers and is easily defined in Mount Victoria. And the other one is the beautiful one, Wistella warblers and gray sided thrush. And there's many more brown bush warblers and uh, parapels. And there's another a species we can find in Mount Victoria, and this is a green strike babblers. And also the restricted range species is uh, gray sea And after Mount Victoria, we can uh, drive back to Bagan and then uh, move to Kalo uh, by flight or by car. If you go by car, it's, it takes you about uh, uh, 60, uh, six hours drive. And here so you can walk uh, from Kalos City to the uh, to the forest we call Yekan Forest, and it would uh, take about uh, a five kilometers walk. Then we can find the many bird species like uh, uh, Burmese Yuhina, This is one of the restricted uh, range species, and duckback sibius, and the other silver ears laughing thrush, and so on. And the other most species, and you can see the spectacle barwin and black tail craig, and Eurasian jay is the with the white face. It's not likely to the uh, Eurasian jay, which you can find in the other place. <clears throat> Another one from uh, uh, from Kalos. Kalos is not very far from the Inly Lake, and you can drive just uh, two hours and two and a half, and then you can take a boat uh, inside. Lake and and our tech species in here is a gray bush chart and color miners. And apart from this, we can see the uh, Chinese grassbird just uh, uh, re rediscovered in in 2013 by Berto Asia's by James Atten's groups. And this is uh, all our bird watching, uh, popular bird watching sites or, or regular bird watching sites in Myanmar, which everybody can afford to go and uh, not very much expensive. And the other site is the uh, <clears throat> other bird watching site, but I'm not uh, going to uh, take you to all that one. But uh, I just mentioned in the uh, place 
from the father thought is uh, Lenya and no one. This uh, in there is it's one of the secondary areas which is supporting the uh, Gonis Peters is critically endangered now. This is a male and female. And the other species, you can see the giant Peter and green broadbill and other broadbill. And the most species in the south is uh, quite similar or same species as happened in Peninsula Malaysia. And others, uh, hornbill species. There are uh, seven hornbill species occur in the uh, tennis rims. The Indoji wetland is uh, one of the Ramsar sites in Myanmar. This is uh, for people who uh, want to uh, uh, take a boat and uh, looking for a boat around the lake, like uh, in the lake. But uh, in Indoji, we have uh, more and more bird species. Uh, rap, uh, birds of prey and uh, water birds, and which is and also uh, which is in in a different uh, kind of habitat. Uh, here is the where the water birds are uh, used to uh, feeding in the area, and also we can find the uh, all, almost all kind of vulture is the red-headed vultures along the upflow. Uh, rivers in the, in the grassland here. Uh, this is the birds of prey and vultures. Even the nesting you can uh, you can see in the uh, to find the white run vultures nesting site. And if you are interested in the if, uh, in the wetland in central Myanmar, it's close to the Mandalay, and it's easy to go. Just about one and one and a half hours drive. And you can explore around the uh, wetlands in central Myanmar. And you can see these uh, ducks, geese, japanas, crakes, and rays. And let's go to the uh, coastal area, Gulf of Madaban, uh, Motoma. And this is one of the Ramsar sites in Myanmar, which supports uh, more than 181 uh, uh, coastal bird, bird species. It's a, a harlex species. Uh, Spoon Basin Pipers, Norman Grinchens, and Great North. And uh, for the general information uh, for a travel to Myanmar, the best time is November to uh, February is the best time. And also it depends on your uh, interesting, uh, in, interesting. If you're interested in the uh, some species which occur only in rainy seasons, that's fine. But it's not rain the whole day, 24 hours. It's, just rain and stop, and when when it stops, you can do a bird watching. And I would like to give you the information. Uh, should you uh, interesting, or should you come to Myanmar, and you can but before that you can browse uh, these websites. And all things are interesting in Myanmar, and even a tiny insect and. Uh, I'm sure you will be enjoy and have a good time when you are visiting to Myanmar. Thank you. Thank you, Lei. Very brief, but very rich information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent presentation. Okay. Now we take questions from yeah. our friends. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Any question? Do you I need to is, stop the sharing? Is, is stop, yeah, you stop sharing. Thank you. Now I can see everybody. Oh, well, not everybody. That's great. Most of, most of the people. Yeah. Andy, are you ready to, to ask a question? Yep. OK, please. Uh, can you tell me more about the Gani Pita? How many pairs of Gani Pitas are there still around in uh, Myanmar? Uh, it's quite a complicated uh, thing to answer. But uh, in, uh, to my suggestions, uh, to my uh, opinions, 
is not more than uh, 800 pairs, uh, individual, I mean, not more than 800 uh, individuals, because according to our uh, experience in forests, because Gunnis beetle is not occur in any kind of habitat, we are very, very sensitive to the habitat destruction. And uh, like in uh, eight years ago, when I was in the in the snowstorms to find the Gunnis beetles, and now, like uh, I think last month, I was there, and most uh, habitats were gone and most of the forests have been converted to the wine farm and some have been slashed and burned. And, but I do expect it and now the uh, forest department, I mean, uh, they try to stop the people close to the reserve forest. And uh, I think the population could be uh, stable if we can stop the disturbance. Since there are 800, are they easy to see? Uh, it depends on the uh, location uh, uh, we go. Yep. And uh, for us, and, and start a couple of years ago and mm -hmm. until last year, we went there uh, at least twice a year and we can uh, see easily because we know the, uh, the right location, uh, where to find them. And if we don't have that uh, right location, it's quite difficult. Okay. And, but in, in, in May, We don't. We doesn't need to use the play bag, and but is if we have uh, photographers who want to get a photograph, and we have to uh, we standardize the uh, the distance, like a, uh, a setting the uh, height, and then use the play bag. But we don't use the uh, a bait. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we are, uh, we want to. Uh, we don't want to uh, let the uh, local people, especially, know that to bait that uh, bird, it could be uh, dangerous for the birds in that area. You you said you said that the birds are active or are they are calling in in a month of uh, May. Yeah. Is it the breeding active. breeding yeah. season? Yeah, it's the breeding season start. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Andy. Uh, there, yeah, there's a question from Kensuke Tanaka of Japan. When is the best month for endemics, especially the last Nothing fresh? Nothing fresh, yeah. Uh, endemics, uh, laughing thrush is not a national endemic, but is we call a near endemic species. It's a restricted range species, and we can travel in the uh, from uh, October to uh, April. Yeah, you can find them, especially in Mount Victoria. And for and the others, endemics is yes. you can find them any time. Okay. So you, you can cover all nine endemic species in one trip. Is it possible? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's possible. And it also depends on uh, how many days you, you are spending in Myanmar. Normally, uh, people are spent about a week. Mm -hmm. If you are uh, planning to find only the endemic species, Mm -hmm. uh, one week is enough. 
Oh, and five okay. days, uh, five or seven days is enough for you. Well, excellent. So during uh, like uh, seven to ten days, like let's say seven days, <coughs> how, how many species will we get? Uh, it depends, and also it uh, depends on our trips, which area we are uh, choosing. Uh, like uh, Mount Victoria, if we include the Mount Victoria, we can see uh, more and more species. Uh, it uh, could be uh, exceed 300 species. I mean, it's not just a uh, rare species, including all species. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Very good. And for, for those who are uh, never been to Asia, there could be more than uh, 300 could be reached to 400. Yeah. If you have ever been to Thailand and Malaysia or some, uh, some other Asian country, so I'm not guarantees that uh, amounts of numbers. Well, since you have many neighbors like Thailand uh, and in China, uh, what, 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 what do you say that the difference between all, all these places? Regarding birding, uh, in China, I never uh, do. I never uh, did the birding in China, only in the border of China. But in Thailand, it's quite um, easy for me because most of the birds are like a tame, not very shiny, and it's very good for the photographers and easy to take the uh, photos. And for Myanmar, it's not like this. It's uh, quite a big uh, challenge to take pictures. And but it's very, very uh, interesting, you know, to chase the bird to get the good photograph. And this kind of feeling is different. And it's very shy. Most bird in Myanmar is very shy. And you don't know see exactly location, you are not sure they are uh, spent the whole day in that area. So they m might be, you know, moving around and then you have to wait and and you have to understand their uh, behaviors and you know that what time they're going to come back. So you will be in the right time to see them and photograph them. Yeah. Okay, thank you. More questions? Yeah. More questions? Yes. One hello, yes. Uh, hello. hello, I have a question, SP. Oh, okay. First okay. of all, everyone, good <laughs> to see you all again. And, uh, my, uh, my, question, my question is uh, probably you already uh, said it in the presentation. I probably missed it. I just wanted to know the best time to visit uh, Myanmar and uh, how likely are the chances for the seven hornbills you uh, you mentioned uh, uh yes the best times in myanmar in uh, in winters start from mid october to uh mid uh march so it's a good times to uh to travel in myanmar but in 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 september to february we have a very high uh, species, a population, uh, population and species, which is a uh, 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 passive migrants, which is a uh, tourist country, and this uh, the good times. But if you want to just see the uh, species with uh, in winter visitor and stay here and residents, it's between mid October to mid March. It's good times. And for the hornbill species, and for seven different species, you can see in the various in the south, tenant stream, and including the helmeted hornbill, and the uh, bushy credits hornbill, and we call the uh, southern brown hornbill, and white crown hornbill. In the north, we do have the rufous neck hornbill. But it's not occurring in South. Yeah. So if you if you go to South, you should be able yeah. to 
cover most part of the hornbills. Is that correct? Uh, if you uh, normally, we uh, most of birders uh, just spend only five or five days or seven days in that area. It's not easy to cover them all, but you can cover them uh, half, more than half of them, just uh, at least four species. And in this season, like in rainy season, you will not able to find the uh, plain parch hornbill. It's only occur in winters, which is uh, migrate from the uh, uh, Thailand, not, uh, yeah, northeastern stream and through the Nyek uh, Archipelagos and through the Malaysia. Yeah, in this time, it's not possible to find them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, yeah. What is your recommendation uh, uh, when you go to Bagan? How many days would you recommend uh, to see the cultural uh, places and the birds? If you just want to uh, explore around the Bagan, yeah, I have done. Uh, yeah, but I want to go again. Yeah. Are you happy there? Yeah, yeah. So you can stay and the full five days mm -hmm. in Bagan, so you can explore even the along the Eori rivers yeah, and uh, cultural areas and birding is very nice, yeah. Four to five midday, days is enough. Yeah. In midday you can go and explore uh, into temple yeah. and in early evenings you can find the birds. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Then uh, the north yeah. of Myanmar, is it safe now? Uh, yeah, it's safe to travel. Most of the sites I'm present here is uh, safe to travel. Is uh, The other side is quite difficult. Some areas uh, we, we don't have a permission. So uh, I didn't mention in this uh, presentation mm -hmm. in detail. So all the sites we got a popular building site is easy to assess and uh -huh. very safe to travel and you can uh, do a soft tracking and it's fine okay thank you yeah. our friend uh philip yes, yes. from china would like to ask a question yeah philip yeah philip go ahead yeah uh, first unmute yourself Okay. Yes. Okay. So, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. So my question, actually, I'm, I'm very interested in Myanmar. And for a number of times, I just went to the border area between China and Myanmar because yeah. there's no soldiers. So I can easily walk across the border and the people there can easily yeah. come to China yeah. because yeah. we are quite friendly to each other. So my primary concern is that first, uh, uh, you know, beside birds, so are there any, are there um, some very important attractions we can see uh, when we do birding there? This is my first question. My second question is that we know, you know, there's some prob internal problems in Myanmar, and uh, is it safe to travel there, just, uh, you know, uh, to different parts of Myanmar? So my third question is that, uh, so if we plan a trip, you know, five days, sure, is too short. So let me say 10 days or 12 days. So what is the best name and what is the best month? You, in your opinion, we can plan that trip. So because we will organize trips to Myanmar, I think uh, after the pandemic, you know, we, we, would, we are trying to promote, bring the Chinese birders to other places of the world, including Myanmar. I think that, you know, because we are so close to each other. So. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for your interest to come and visiting Myanmar for birdings. And uh, is, if you uh, you know, have to spend uh, much uh, money on your flight from your, uh, your country to Myanmar, and you better uh, spend more days in Myanmar, and if you have uh, you uh, have to pay less for your flight, is 
it, does, it doesn't matter. You can stay a few days. Um, so uh, it is safe to travel, uh, okay. as I mean earlier, in this uh, area with a popular or regular birding, uh, bird watching site in Myanmar. And it's safe. You can go any time, any season. Mm, thank you. And you can see all the residents in Myanmar. And but for your first questions, so I, I miss it. No, just uh, you know, I know Myanmar has a very long history, has a lot of a culture things. Oh, so yes. when we plan the birding trip there, so beside the birds, I think uh, you know. Any other attractions we can consider? Oh yes, and uh, most people are interested in this kind of uh, we call uh, culture plus uh, natures, mm -hmm. and we can do both of them uh, by fifty percent to uh, by fifty percent. And mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, cultures, and we have uh, like a bagan and mm -hmm. Indian Lake and Mandalay. It's very rich uh, cultures, and you can uh, spend not only just uh, 10 days, you can spend uh, about 15 or 16 days. Normally we good. operate uh, that kind of a toll is about uh, 16 days, uh, com combined the uh, eco toll and culture toll. Mm -hmm. So 16 days is fine for you. If you want to explore more uh, area outside the uh, regular site, you can add mm -hmm. more days. That's good. And That's also, good. if you come uh, a few people, you have to pay high costs. And you have, if you bring more people, so you can reduce your costs. Mm -hmm. So what is the group size you suggest? The best group size you suggest in your country? Group size? Normally, I think uh, for cultures and uh, birding, about a maximum 16. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Between 10 and 16, a maximum. Yeah, yeah that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're don't, worry, don't worry about friends from China. You know, they, they don't fly to Myanmar. They just walk to the border. <laughs> and that's it. You know, cross a, 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 a simple bridge. Here in Myanmar, <laughs> suspension bridge. So we have no soldiers, you know, garrison between the border, you know, yeah, so yeah. they can easily come and we can also go there. Yeah. At the borders, you can see the same bird as China. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand. <laughs> yeah. Yep, are there more questions? Uh, there's a question from Vicky Bowman. Uh, can you tell us about Myanmar bird watchers or and how popular bird watching is in your country? Uh, bird watchers? Yeah, bird watchers in Myanmar. Yeah, uh, now we still have uh, very few bird watchers in Myanmar. That's why we are trying to persuade uh, uh, people to involve in the bird watching and due to bird conservation. That's why we are doing the birding activities uh, once a month. Uh, and uh, in, uh, I think two years ago, we, uh, we did twice a month. And to, to, uh, you know, to encourage people and to get uh, more interesting and knowledge about the bird. Yeah. I think there are more and more people are interested in the bird. Now you can see on the Facebook, they have a, a lot of, they post a lot of bird pictures and they talk a lot of, uh, about birds. And now it becomes, uh, people come to know that the bird is, uh, it's very uh, good to, uh, to see. And you can, you know, spend your time uh, for finding the bird you know, as a leisure. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. So, do you have any mammals there? I mean, just uh, just like in Sichuan, we have a Sichuan golden monkey. 
So with this kind of models, do you have any highlighting models so, so people can see during their bed reporting trip? Uh, the trips along the uh, our toll site, it just uh, only the uh, uh, common mammal. mammal. Mm -hmm. You must see the, uh, but in Mopitoria, you can see the, uh, you can heard about uh, heard the lock given. Mm -hmm. okay. And okay. some other monjack and yellow breasted bunting, uh, 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 no, no, sorry. Yeah, some, uh, I can I forget the names. Yeah, no, some no, other uh, score. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Great. Okay, so uh, this is really a wonderful presentation. We learned so much from learning about Myanmar. We couldn't wait to visit there. You know, after the after the pandemic, we have visited everywhere in the world. Yeah, so oh, yes. yeah. so many this places. Is, oh, this <laughs> is this is boring enough. Yeah. All right. So um, before we we let Lay go, before we let everybody go, so uh, we're gonna take a, a group photo. Okay. Again, as usual. So um, everybody, uh, please turn on your camera. Right, then we we'll see everybody. Excellent. No, Michael. Uh, <laughs> Mike. Okay, uh, say, say your name. Washington. Yep. Name Hello, everybody. Sorry, I, my, my computer has no camera. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, three, three day, uh, three. Is there some people back there? Yeah, uh, yeah. Please turn your camera and all right. Thank you very much. There's still three people there. <laughs> without seeing their faces. Mohit. <laughs> Mohit. All right. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, raise your hand is not enough. You know, please show your face. <laughs> all right all right okay you want to take skip like that okay so um ladies and gentlemen please look at the camera what? smile <laughs> now say three two one victor thank you very much and thank you again lay and my friends from myanmar it's a very good presentation and oh, yeah. and then someone came in again, Mian Lin. Yeah. Mian Lin. <laughs> let's take another picture. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> okay, let's take one more picture. Okay, all right. Ah, okay, now it's brighter. Okay, let's do it again, right? Let's go. One, two, three. Okay, thank you very much. So, thank uh, you. Mike, where are we going next week? Oh, next week we're going outside of Asia. Oh. We're going to Brazil with oh, that's our great boss, place. Yeah. organizer of the Brazil Bird Fair. Bird Fair. Yeah. So we're going to South America next week. That's next Friday evening. Okay. So everybody have a nice weekend and we'll see you next Friday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank hey, you for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Good night.